conditions that I used for method selection were two websites, uh, UCD Toolbox and um, Design Method Toolkit. Both of these are great websites uh, that have an abundance of UX methods and a lot of actionable details surrounding the execution of these methods. For, so now let's dive into the selected techniques. So for the first round of diverging, I chose, I have two techniques, shout out ideas and um, mashup. Uh, so essentially, the first one is either a diverging technique that utilizes a how might we question, which is a positive statement and a fixed point of creative thought. Essentially, users here are tasked to think on the how might we question and then write any ideas that come immediately to mind uh, on the post that's here. So it's a great technique for starting an ideation process because it's quantity friendly, it's, it can be playful, um, it could defer judgment, in this case it does in our question. Um, it, it could build on other ideas as well, but the second, methods, the second method does this so much more better. So the second method is a mashup. It's essentially a diverging technique that's, um, that uses a... that is both distrib distributive and generative in the way that data is used from the previous uh, method. So essentially I've made three categories all contextually bound to the uh, how much question and um, essentially all of these ideas have been added here and distributed by the participants themselves and the last field, the mashup itself, it's a field where all of the previous categories, all of the data from the previous categories is combined into a coherent logical concept hopefully. As you can see here our process has been quite positive. Um, so yeah, for the second converging technique and last one, uh, no, <laughs> sorry, for the first converging technique, I used the COCD box, which is a diverging technique that utilizes a heavy um, space with several um, constraining factors. It's, it's essentially a place for distributing the concepts the f that were formed uh, within the previous process the and diverging process. So in this converging process we have several um, constraining factors uh, that distribute ideas based on a, well, in our case, uh, uh, different types of ideas, but essentially it can be pretty much anything. Uh, it's a form of um, evaluation matrix, basically. But in this case it's made to be more playful, resembling a talk show uh, board. It, kind of does, so uh, that helps with relatability and increased accessibility. Um, so why did I use these methods? Okay, so for the first one, I think I already explained it's relatable, accessible, allows for quick work, work sprints, and it also contains, and it also supports spontaneous creative thinking. So this is for um, why I used the shout out ideas. For the matchup, I needed a great method to have to start distributing the data already, but also still be in the diverging process. Um, and I was trying to utilize the participants' uh, creative uh, thinking to the fullest. So this is essentially a great method to do that. Um, yeah, so for the COCD box, I already explained, it's a great way to constrain and distribute and have a clear and gain a clear design direction. For the dot voting, uh, this was the last converging method that I used. Um, yeah, it's essentially a uh, play on voting itself, uh, where users are tasked, they have one or more votes, and they place their dot on the vote that they, on their cast vote or cast concept in our case. Um, how did I change these methods? Well, for the dot voting, I added three dots instead of one, just to widen the diverging uh, the uh, concept result and just uh, gain a little bit of extra help from all the creative participants. For the COCD box, nothing really. The same thing goes for um, the rest of them. Uh, I added instructions on the first three. I forgot to add instructions on the dot voting. And during the divergent process in the middle, um, I also added these methods, so they're not really methods, they're more like um, visual aids that were supposed to help with the diverging process, giving them more direction, uh, because 
the how much question itself is pretty broad so I tried to for the first five minutes I tried not to narrow it down but after that I wanted to help them so this is essentially what we used now on to chapter two. Oh wait um, <clears throat> how did I establish a good flow so the order of so I followed the order of techniques strictly uh, down to the ideation process diverging first converging second um, I used the appropriate methods and Follow the instructions of uh, deployment uh, quite closely, um, and I believe that these specific methods in this combination streamline the process of user input, user accessibility, user perception, and thus user creative effectiveness. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, due to the requirements of the subject, I am needed to have you on camera for most of the time and to record your audio and video which will uh, of course the information will stay anonymous but um, in terms of academic needs it may be used by certain lecturers and other academic staff in relation to the uh, final evaluation of the project so um, some of you know each other um, some of you do not so um, in order to break the ice a little bit and just uh, become a more effective team, uh, this is going to be a creative session. Uh, we're going to be ideating on a problem and we're going to be using several techniques for diverging and converging in order to... So my name is Konstantin. I'm 23 years old and I'm a programmer for the last few years. Uh, my hobbies, uh, I don't I just came back from lessons, so I guess that's my hobby right now. Uh, yeah, I guess music is my biggest hobby. Uh, did I miss one of the questions? Uh, no, I think you covered them all. Okay. So now, Ivona, can you, yeah? Yes, uh, my name is Ivona. I'm 22 years old, studying QXD and hopefully to graduate in this year. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, cool. So now team two, uh, Svetoslav, can you start? Yes, uh, I am Svetoslav, I'm 24 years old. I just uh, graduated marketing on the And now I'm searching for a new job. Uh, uh, with the Georgi, we have uh, business plans. So essentially, there's no limit. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? No for now. Okay then. Um, the divergent phase is going to be 20 minutes, starting in one minute. Uh, we're going to divide the the diverging phase. So essentially for thoughts. So let's begin. Uh, so yeah, let's start. You have 10 minutes to uh, write down your f the ideas that come to mind. Cool. Interesting distribution among the ideas. Um, for the purpose of the of the how might we question uh, so far it looks quite good I would say because we have a majority of community and group needs and then we have human needs and of course uh, uh, in the last place we have technologies so now five minutes doing that so you can start now uh, so you can ask do we have to write it on a new post-it or we just put uh, copy these post-its um, you can copy or you can just um, Preferably, you would copy them because other people might also use them. So if you take the original one, uh, it might uh, make yeah. the situation a little bit confusing. So try to copy them. Okay. And distributed ideas and 30 seconds if anybody wants to give a final effort <laughs> and distribute them. If they repeat, it's okay. Then we don't really need to... Really uh, so two of those are mine, and I, I just copied the the posters. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Cool. 
Okay, so well, um, time is up. We're done with this part, and well, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, no impossible ideas. That's good. I also like to think anything is possible. Okay, so now moving on to the final part, we're gonna spend ten minutes. Actually, this was it. Thank you so much for participating, and. Well, I cannot really guarantee that any of these ideas will see the light of day, but I can guarantee that you're all very creative people. So that's the main takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reward, a little bit of, you know, feeling food or whatever the expression is. I have no idea. But <laughs> again, thank you so much for participating. And yeah. Have a nice <laughs> have a nice evening then. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Okay, so the methods that I used for the second round of diverging and converging are as follows. Uh, wait, actually the sources that I used is my Google Drive. I've been collecting for the past three years various UX resources, um, all kinds of helpful stuff, books, uh, articles, all types, types of actionable uh, you know, resources, um, models, theoretical models. But essentially, I managed to, uh, for several months, create this huge uh, list, landscape of UX techniques. Essentially, I compiled most of the known UX techniques, uh, plus some some from um, neighboring fields like marketing. So essentially my first technique is ideation cards. Um, the ideation cards are essentially fuel for your diverging process because diverging is a stream or a flow of data and the more you have from it and the more stuff you get from it, the higher standard of data you have. So essentially ideation cards are um, um, distributed concepts that help with creative thinking, um, perspective changing, uh, out-of-the-box thinking, and essentially just are helpful in many ways. So essentially they are like a fake team of additional researchers. And, that's, and that as in solo research assignment is exactly what we need because it's a perfect uh, um, complement on already existing data from the previous round and it also um, encourages uh, insightful thinking and better judgment as you will see in our case for this project. So uh, yeah that's why did I use these? Uh, well for the ideation cards I pretty much already explained. So for my second method I used a FAB statement modified. Um, actually both of the methods are modified and I'll explain in a second. But essentially, the FAB statement is a um, converging technique that is primarily used by salespeople uh, in sales converging that streams, streamlines a quantitative evaluation based on three categories, features, advantages, and benefits. Now, uh, it's, it's ultimately strive, striving to have a categorized benefit listing. Um, so why did I use this? Because it's a perfect complementation to the previous method because uh, essentially I needed, for this project itself, for the subject, I needed a conclusion. And a conclusion is essentially a judgment. So I needed to judge the final data in a usable way. Um, well, not really a usable, it said meaningful, but I, I already have meaningful concepts. Now the next thing is implementation. So in this case, um, I needed a method that could Borrow, that borrows from a different field that is exactly what we need for the implementation of this concept in real life. So essentially, um, it just complements the whole uh, ideation process and especially round two. I also forgot to mention on that note that striving for um, actually applying the project or seeing how it would fare in, in real life and trying to add this final analysis type judgment uh, I think was quite beneficial for the end product, but in the case of the ideation cards, I also use them from my Google Drive, but 
the thing with them is that they are business ideation, business development ideation cards. So they have a direct correlation with the following method of the FAB statement because they are both sales, business, and development related. They are both implementational related. So in this sense, I think that meaning, that the meaning factor is not only enhanced but also built on. Um, so yeah, now the customization. Ooh. Okay, so essentially I use 22 cards that are that have to do with um, different factors in business development, but also they have a direct correlation with design. And each concept has several parts. As you can see, this is the winner, and these are the other three perspective concepts. As you can see, uh, the winner is actually disadvantaged because it also it only has two uh, concepts that make it and the rest of them have doubled that. So essentially what I did here is uh, the, I used the ideation cards as a sort of judgment uh, on each part of each concept uh, to have a better understanding of how the overall benefit from these concepts, how they fare under all of these factors, which is important for, which is directly correlated with their implementation in real life. So uh, these are the points. Uh, for the FAB statement, I augmented it by uh, changing the categories a little bit, how many features, and splitting the benefits, which is the most important one because it has value to cost and value to the society. Now, I also understood that there would be an inherent negative bias in the amount of points for the winner concept because due to the uh, sheer disadvantage it has from concepts that it was made from. So essentially what I did here, I was I added compensation based on that bias. So for features, it's one point, strength, two points, uh, sorry, advantages, um, two points, and then for benefits, uh, it can be a maximum of 20 points or the least 10 points. So as you can see, uh, these are the main uh, ways that I modified it. So yeah, on to chapter four. Chapter 4. The output from the session uh, was used as a starting point of inspiration in my own creative process. Well, okay, so first of all, the selection and combination are great and they ensure a very accessible uh, and perceivable and from that effective um, ideation process for the first round. And the combination itself is pretty streamlined. Uh, these methods are good, uh, they're fast to do with a concentrated team, so essentially the, um, each method uh, in combination with the next method uh, just enhance the overall uh, quality of data and also by choosing this right combination of methods in this sequence using these participants I ensured high standards of data, so high standards of concepts. Uh, essentially, for my participants, we have a computer scientist, marketer, two years designers, and we were supposed to have an IB student, but they couldn't make it because, well, scheduling differences. So essentially, um, by choice of members, participants, um, by choice of methods, combination, and by the sheer features of these methods. So for example, in the shout out idea, shout out ideas method, uh, it essentially supports um, spontaneous creative thinking, which is huge, hugely important. Uh, it also uh, supports um, quality, uh, quantity. Um, so, for example, in the next, um, the mash out, we have a categorization, which is good because it also starts to um, transform the ideative data into something uh, streamlining a logical concept and essentially by the end of the factor it does and it already has formulated and even constrained even though they're still in the di in the diverging process we already have a type of constrained by logic um, concept so um, they really do work on top of each other and they build on ideas and essentially on this method um, the building on ideas is the heaviest it's essentially uh, that is pretty much half the method uh, just building on ideas and it showed to be a hugely important factor uh, in the creative session itself. Now I followed instructions during the execution of these methods. I streamlined the process as much as I can and I augmented my channels. 
for example, the the first round of, of diverging um, after half the time was done, I uh, provided them with uh, images. Um, and other visual concepts models that they use to enhance their own creative thought. And as stated, it did work and it did help with the uh, creative process. So for the second round, I pretty much adapted to uh, bias within the UX equation. Uh, as mentioned, I tried to uh, balance the obvious bias against the winner concept. Uh, against the other three concepts, which had double the amount of um, uh, core parts, and essentially I tried to compensate um, by changing and changing a little bit of the features and adding additional points based on contextually bound and contextually related to the Hamatri question categories. So post value to cost and value to society, which essentially uh, gave way to the final winners. Um, so yeah, and factor biasing. Um, so just a combination of having the right participants with the right combination of methods, uh, and then augmenting uh, the streamlines of data and the filters by choosing good converging techniques and modifying them to show better judgment at the end of how feasible a meaningful concept really is through the lenses of business development ideation cards and through a specialized FAB sales method. So yeah, thank you for listening to these ramblings and um, good day.